All right, guys, uh, welcome. We're trying something a little different today. We usually do coffee with Coach Patrick, but I've got uh, my two assistant coaches with me, Jason Terrellon and Vincent Chung. And uh, for today, we're trying something a little different. We're going to do uh, kind of a Q&A or questions with, with Coach Patrick. And I thought, why not have questions with uh, the three of us? Um, so first question we, we had that came in from an anonymous member of our club here at Chena Swim Club is, what made you want to pursue your passion for swimming and turn it into a career? What motivates you to get up at 5 a.m. to coach swimmers? So, guys, I guess let me throw this to you. I'll start with uh, with you, Jason. Right? What made you want to to take your passion for swimming and turn it into a career? What made you want to do this? Now, you're young in your career, both you guys, so so mm -hmm. this is recent. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I kind of started because, like, when I swam, I never really had the idea of being a coach. Um, but it was one summer I was lifeguarding. And the winter club or the summer club that I was used to swim at asked me to come and like help volunteer coach one day. And so I helped them with no coaching experience. And just like the look on those kids' faces were like complete awe as I was talking to them. Um, and it was just really fun. Like it was my first ever coaching experience. It was fun kind of seeing them improve just in that one session I had with them. So I kind of enjoyed that feeling of being able to help people and help them get better. So after that, I kind of started coaching in the summer more full-time, took on an assistant role, and then took on a head coach role or lead coach role a couple summers after. And I think kind of like what made me want to take that and turn it into more of a career was really just seeing that like the look of excitement and happiness when a kid like improves on a stroke or gets a best time or like sets a club record or gets like the gold medal. It's just seeing how happy they are with them improving and knowing that I had some small part to play in that really kind of made me want to keep going and see how far I could take it. And so how, sorry, man, how old were you when you started coaching? So I always find it ironic that you coach summer swimming at the winter club. I always, I always <laughs> get a kick out of that, just the irony of it all. But how old were you when you started doing been. that? I would have been just out of high school. So about 17. Okay. It was my two summers in my first two years of swimming at UBC that I actually started to coach in the summer in my off season. Okay. Yeah. And that, and that was the thing. So you were, you were going to school and then coaching at CDSC because you, you retired from swimming after second year. Yeah. And then you started coaching at CDSC and you spent two seasons at CDSC. Two seasons, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then I kind of snagged you back to China and you did your last year of school while you were working at China the first year, right? Yeah, because I graduated in uh, 2017. Okay, so I guess the extension of the question then is, if you went when you went to go to university at UBC, you didn't go there with the intention of being a professional swim coach. No. Right. So, so what? When did that switch happen? When you're like, you know what? I know this wasn't the plan, but I think I want to. I want to give this a go. Like, what? What drove you to make that decision? Um, I think it was. I think it was my first year working with CDSC. Um, I had the younger kids, so I had about, for China, it would have been like the junior groups. And this was way back in like the double A, triple A system. Mm -hmm. But I had one boy, Noah McDonald. I had one boy, and like the groups I had weren't supposed to be like high level groups. They were like almost like feeder groups into the next level up. Um, but I had one boy get his double A times. And then he went to double A's and he got a silver medal in one of the breaststroke events. I can't remember which one. And just like he was so happy and excited and like ran over and thanked me. I was like, oh God, like and it just felt it felt good to be a part of that and like help him get there. And I thought, okay, if I can do this like full time and like get to a higher level, higher level, sorry, and just like see where I can take athletes and how far I can take them. I thought that'd been a cool thing to try and go for. Okay. What about you, Vin? Like what got you uh kind of thinking this way because you went to school for engineering like same thing when you started university you weren't going to university thinking you know I'm going to be a professional swim coach and this is my pathway um so so what, what was it for you what kind of drove you in this direction well it's funny that you say that because I didn't really go to school thinking I'd be an engineer either I just went <laughs> for engineering you know what which most people do right like I, I went to school to do finance and, and and accounting and I have no interest in being an accountant yeah like um, I think for me going to university was like mandatory, not mandatory, nothing's mandatory, but like it was expected. Yeah. Um, 
So, you know, I figured I'd like these things. Maybe I should try doing engineering, whatever. And then I didn't really think much of it. And I didn't really think too far ahead about what I would want to do my, with my career. But um, what I did know is that um, when I was in school, I was taking more time off of school to do more coaching. So, okay. like, um, you know, we're supposed to have these work terms where you're, where you're just trying to get work experience for yourself. And I would just keep delaying those opportunities because I wanted to coach in the summer for my summer club. I just ended up graduating like a year later than all my buddies who did the actual regular schedule. But, you know, I just kept pushing it back and it didn't really matter. I was like, yeah, I'll just push it back again. Oh, yeah, whatever. I'll just coach again. So, but like the, if you want to go back to the start of everything, it's, I was like, I think I was similar age to Jason. Like I was probably grade 11 or grade 12 when I started and I coached like the, um, we had like the mini mantas, which is just like the skills equivalent, right? Like they're six and under and like new to swimming. So just, we're just playing games and singing all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I hated it. Like I didn't, I mean, I didn't hate it. I loved it by the end of it. But when I first was getting into it, I was like, this isn't, I didn't want to do this. Like, this is dumb. Like I, I'm like really technical as a swimmer. I want to go in there and fix strokes. I want to go in there and coach kids to win like why am i doing why am i singing singing motorboat or whatever <laughs> holding hands with these little kids right why do i have to do that and like my mom kind of told me i should do it and like the the people in the club told me that i should do it and i was like okay whatever i'll just gut it out or whatever it was really it was a bit of a it's a bit of a struggle initially like i was not happy taking that position but then obviously it kind of kickstarted everything else so then afterwards, I just kind of rose up the, the ranks of my summer club, and then eventually I became the head coach of my summer club. Um, and yeah, like I said, I just kept wanting to do coaching more and like investing more time into that instead of anything else, really. Like, there's nothing else that in my life that really captivated me as much as swimming or, or coaching did at that time. Mm. So I just kept doing that more and more. And then after a while, I was like, okay, I've become the head coach of my club that I grew up with already. Like what's next. Right. Gina's next. That's Gina's next. next. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, and then I, like, um, at that time, a bunch of my swimmers were good enough to like, and liked the sport enough to want to transition to full time. Mm-hmm. And so I, and it just, it was kind of like a really good coincidence of events where like, um, there was a local winter club or whatever year round club that was rec- recruiting people. And I was like, Hey, go, go over there. Right. So a bunch of them went over to that club and I contacted the coach and I said, Hey, you know, can I come and shadow you or like visit you to learn? Right. Would you like, say that it started off as a bit of a spark and then every year you did it and the longer you went with your coach and you just kind of kept burning and getting stronger and stronger. So it wasn't like a defining moment that drove you. It was just the more you did it, the more you wanted it. Um, I guess so. I think every single year you just wanted to be better. Like, I think mm-hmm. there was just, I just wanted to be just, just better at coaching, better at, I just wanted to, I wanted to be great. I, mm-hmm. I, I do want to be great. I think that's basically it was, is, um, and I think behind everything there's, um, there's a really big motivation because I was only a summer swimmer and I never made the transition to um full-time swimming so like when back when jason and i used to race a lot in in summer swimming and he was Mm -hmm. like the god um like uh, legend legend an absolute legend still still holds the records today um but like when what year did you make your jump was it great i would have been great time yeah 2009 okay so like after you made the jump and then i saw so I'm a year older than you, but after he made the jump, I was like, okay, that's interesting. I don't have to race him anymore. Yay. But, um, you know, when I was like grade 11 or grade 12, I was kind of, you know, you, you take swimming to a certain level at summer swimming and there's not much else. Right. So then you just transition to coaching. And then after I was done high school, I saw Jason was like in varsity swimming. I was like, damn, that's really cool. Right. Like, and I've always looked up to people in the varsity teams. 
Uh, but I never made the jump myself, right? And I always was so jealous of people who made the jump for whatever reason. And then I think not until I was probably like 18 or 19 um, that I realized like, oh, I missed my opportunity. Like I missed the, I missed the boat. Like I think I could have been pretty good. Um, you know, not like Olympic Olympic level good, but like probably pretty good. Like I had enough of a drive and like good enough work ethic, I think. So I tried out for the UBC varsity team in my first year as a walk-on and like I didn't get cut in the first practice, which is a win. Mm -hmm. But like I was getting my, I was getting my butt handed to me by everyone, including the girls. So I just had no base, right? And no fitness. Um, and then I just kind of gave up on um, that swimming, whatever, varsity dream afterwards because I didn't know it wasn't realistic, right? So I guess what I'm trying to say is like a big part of my motivation is like unrealized, uh, unrealized potential or unrealized passion because like I didn't really pursue that because I didn't know any better. Like when I was like 14 or 15, like I didn't know that I actually liked this more than anything else in the world. And then when I'm 21 or whatever, I kind of found something that's like, okay, this is very awesome. Like I know I really like this a lot. Yeah. And so I had this like debate internal struggle for like two years where I was just, just about to finish school. And I was like, okay, what do I do? Like I doing my doing engineering is like the most practical stable um logical thing that i could pursue but on the other hand i like this a lot mm -hmm. right so it was just Absolutely. it was just such a struggle right and well, it's I choosing I what's practical versus your passion yeah, yeah. i didn't want to i think what it boiled down to is um i didn't want to let that um potential go to waste again right good enough yeah I'm, so yeah so is it really change what motivates you guys? Like from what got you guys into this and why you're doing this, is that really much of a different answer than why you get up in the morning every day to do it? And is it different than what you, what got you into the profession in the first place and gotten you to where you are? Is it pretty much the same for you guys? Mine stayed pretty much the same. Like, again, especially now with like a lot of China athletes now, like seeing that progression, like how well they improve and like how much, like you can just see that moment when they buy into it. Mm-hmm. And it's those 5 a.m. workouts where, like, you really see who's bought in, like, who's going to be there before me, who's ready to go early in the morning. Like, so I think my answer is still pretty much the same from when it started. Is I like to see that improvement and, like, to see them grow and get better and better and just fall in love with the sport as I did when I was their age. How about you, Vin? Same for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it kind of mirrors your answer a little bit more. Like, it's not so much about because now i'm doing this on a regular basis it's not about myself anymore it's about giving giving as much of myself to anybody who wants to be helped or anybody who wants to get better mm -hmm. um and like helping them achieve their goals or like kind of teaching them the things that i think they need to be successful so just giving giving myself to to those guys right like you know if you could help somebody with something like if you can help anybody once a day, it's already a, a, a really good feeling, even if it's just one little thing. Mm. Well, absolutely. It, it's interesting listening to you guys and, and your stories because, I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a smidge older um, than you guys, <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. Um, mm. It'd be interesting to kind of come back and have this conversation with, with both you guys in, in 15 years to see uh, kind of where you're at with things. Because I know for me, what would, what drove me or motivated me to get into coaching and what was my, my burning passion at the time is very different than what it is today of what drives me and motivates me to get up. I know for me, like I started off and if you talk to any of my coaches or you talk to my parents or some of my old teammates, if you talk to them and their, their view of me of what kind of a swimmer or athlete I was before I stopped, um, they'll speak very highly of me as an athlete. I, I think I was an okay swimmer. I think I was above average, but I wasn't anything special. Um, I was, uh, it's kind of the things that I see wrong in the sport, right? I was that, the hotshot 10 year old who was the best in the country and all that stuff. But like 10 and under, I, I started when I was three. Of course I was good when I was 10. Like, you know, it, it, then you kind of progress and 
my career as I went through 11, 12, 13, 14 just got a little bit different in that uh, everybody got big and strong. I'll never forget, I was 14 and my best friend in swimming was six months younger than me. We raced all the time, but we're 14 years old. I was five feet, 100 pounds, and he was 6'2", 175, 180 pounds. We were best friends and I was older, but everyone thought I was his little brother when we hung out. Uh, <laughs> And it was just like, it was the irony and we race each other. So, uh, the ability for me to win once I, you know, hit 11, 12, 13, 14, got really tough and I loved winning. I love competing. Um, and then at 14, because we different era back in the early nineties, like I was lifting weights as a 12 years old and I got so strong. My lower body was great. I was a breaststroker. My, my kick was fantastic. But then at 14, I was swimming a ton of breasts at provincial short course. Um, and, uh, I, I, I pushed off the wall at the 50 meter mark and I tore my groin apart on both sides and, and, and never really recovered from the injury could never kick the same and stuck with it for a little while, but at 15, I quit. And when I quit, I, I hated, well, no, I didn't. I, I used to say like, I hate this sport. I hate everything about it. I never want to be a part of it. I never want to be involved with it. And it wasn't really, there's no, no, no speck of honesty in that. It was just a 15 year old kid who was really upset that he couldn't do what he wanted to do anymore. So I yeah. got angry with swimming. Um, and my mom, was the head coach of the club. So she just said, well, you're not going to sit at home. And, and I, I drifted off. I did high school sports. I, you know, I played basketball, volleyball. I did track and field. Um, I did different things like that. And I played baseball. I got into baseball and stuff like that. But I was just picking up a new sport at 14, 15 years old versus something I had done from when I was young. My mom just said, you're not going to sit at home. So she put me on pool deck at 16, 15, 16. I think I just turned 16. She put me on pool deck. I started coaching six and unders. Uh, worked with eight and unders and all that stuff and kind of got through high school. And then my senior year of high school, because in, in Ontario, we had OAC. So we had like a grade 13 at the time. So I was 18 turning 19 in my last year of high school. And my mom's assistant coach uh, resigned abruptly at the end of the summer. So she was kind of stuck. And I just stepped in and filled the role. And I, I just had this, this spark that was lit up inside of me. And I loved it. Like it was, it was something that gave me so much passion and, 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 excitement and happiness and joy working with athletes. At that point, I was working with their club's best, you know, 12 and under, 13 under swimmers. But I was also helping one of my good buddies who was a senior in the program at this point because he was two years younger than me and just helping him kind of go to a junior nationals or go to a senior nationals. And he ended up being a national finalist in his career and all that stuff. So I, I started helping him and I just, the fire got lit and it got lit aggressively. And I remember saying to my parents, I was 18, just about to turn 19, I said, I, I want to coach for a career. And they sat me down and they said, absolutely not. You're not coaching for a career. It's not a profession. It's not a job. And we were a small town at the time. And it, it, you really didn't know if this could be something you could do full time. Um, so that was it. And I went to, went to, you're going to college and you're going to take accounting and finance and you're going to go do that. So I went and did that. Um, did a couple years of college, did the accounting stuff, worked as an accountant, hated it. It wasn't for me. Nothing against the profession. Just, I wasn't built for that. Um, I didn't enjoy it. So I went off to university and, and, and when I went up to Laurentia university, I, I, so I did do some coaching when I was in college in Barrie, and then I went to university in Sudbury, and I, I, I kind of emailed and said, hey, do you, you know, maybe I want to swim. And I'd been about seven years at that point since I really swam competitively, if I'm being honest. So it was awful. I was out of shape. It was bad. Um, but anyway, it was, yeah, it was bad. Um, but I got in. I, they, luckily, they didn't have a full team, right? I went to a smaller school, didn't have a full swim team, so I got in to swim a little bit. And, of course, by the time we got to training camp at Christmas, I got injured because my body was so broken already and I was out of shape. And I started doing some helpful stuff with coaching. Um, and when I started helping some athletes make their their CI times, which are your sport times, and the, the, the fire was there again. And I knew, like, I was getting a bit older at this point. And I decided to leave school, and I was 24, turning 25. And I just I remember telling my parents, and they were so mad at me. They'll tell me they, they weren't, but they really were upset because I said, I'm, I'm going to leave school and I'm going to pursue my coaching career. And I just started. And I started mm -hmm. late. Um, but my motivation was I wanted to do, a f I had something to offer and I wanted to affect some form of change in Canadian swimming. That was always my passion. I wanted to have some impact no matter how small in Canadian swimming because I was a proud Canadian. I am a proud Canadian. And I wanted to see Canada be among the best in the world. And that's what drove me. And um, so, yeah, so I just, I, I really kind of let that fire drive me. At the time, as I was going through, I'm in my mid twenties, and I started to really get caught up with like, I want to be the best coach in the world, and I want to be on the the, the Olympic Games pool deck with my gold medalist and my world record holder, and I'm gonna get all this praise, and I'm gonna be this world renowned coach. And you know, what was funny is over time, and that's why the the, the question is different because that drove me and motivated me because um, I didn't have a national swimming career, right? And I didn't have name recognition, and I came from a small town, and 
the questions I got was, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Does he even know how to coach? Does he even, did he ever swim? And all these other, and the answer is yes, 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 yes to all those questions. But, but I didn't have anything kind of supporting or backing me. And I didn't have those senior swimmer friends and I didn't have those connections. So it's like, it was, it was a bit of a tough go. So I was kind of felt like I had to constantly prove that I could do this. And I think for the longest time that was a motivator for me was proving to everyone who was a naysayer or a doubter that, oh, you're not smart enough or you're not talented enough or you didn't swim at a high enough level, all these things. So I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And yeah, that can motivate you for a while, <laughs> the, the, the prove everybody wrong thing. But eventually you, you stop caring what people think about you. And I'm kind of at that point in my life now. So what drove me at the time to be this world renowned famous coach, it's so funny because now I, you know, I'm 41 and the guy at 25 wanted to be proved to everybody he was the best. And the guy at 41 wants to be so anonymous and ironically doing stuff on the internet right now. Thank you, COVID-19. Um, but that, that I really, what drives me to get up every morning or what drove me to get up last season with Rabin, the extra workout, because he had to swim the 10K and go and do an extra morning and get up five, six mornings a week. The guy who who got up seven mornings a week for stretches of his time in his career at China and the guy who was running so many sections of the club. I want to be that person who helps somebody achieve whatever level of success they've set out for themselves. That's what drives me. If, they, if somebody can have a passion to pursue their personal excellence, no matter what level it is, and I can be the person that's somewhat anonymous behind that person and just help them achieve what they want. So that that's what drives me. And I know I've affected Canadian swimming because I'm in Canada, but now I just want to affect any type of every person that I come into contact with or work with. I want to have a positive effect on their career, no matter how small. It doesn't matter if I coach them or if they're a different club. And and that's really what drives me every day is that I have athletes who want to work with me, who choose to have me guide their careers. And I take that responsibility um, very, very seriously. It's it, it, it's it's empowering. It's very uplifting as a person like this. If, if a James Dergossoff or a Bella Cesario or a Tim Zhang or Angelica Bath or uh, a Tito Hume, I think anybody who knows Tito will get that reference. But any of the swimmers and anybody on the like, I don't care how fast you are, but if you think that I can help you and you're motivated to, to work and I help inspire you, then that's what gets me out of bed every morning easily, right? I don't get up at 5 a.m. I get up at 4.45 a.m. every day of the week. Um, but I like to do that. It's what drives me nuts uh, in a good way, right? Like it, when you get on pool deck, it's like a shot of adrenaline. When you're there at practice and you've got the environment, like that's, there's no greater feeling. Like I really, I really love what I get to do when I'm on that deck and I'm working with athletes and we're going at it. Um, to be honest, the most boring time for me is kind of the taper time or when we go to the meets and stuff like that. Eh. But when you're in the process of trying to figure out how to develop this swim and how to get each athlete to produce the best performance they can physically perform based on their skill sets, their weaknesses, and you you address all those areas and those deficiencies and those gaps, and you come up with a plan. And when you go and you have that race and the plan comes to fruition, that's a really cool feeling. But it's not. It's like you go back to 2019 when James won Pan Am Trials and he, he in his comeback. The win wasn't the super exciting part. The time. The best time wasn't the super exciting part. It was the reflection on when he stopped, took a break, and everything that went into getting him back and the journeys and the conversations and the different challenges you go through and the emotional challenges and and and, and, and all the things that go into being this athlete and getting him all the way back to where he wanted to be. I think it was just watching him swim and look like himself. Like that was the thing that really excited and motivated me. And yeah, it was great. He, he won a gold medal. He was national champion. He made the Pan Am team, won the best time. I think it was the eighth fastest time in Canadian history. Like all those things are really great, but those are not the things that really drive or motivate you. It's the work that goes into those accomplishments that you reflect on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's what motivates me now is I, I like, I like the jigsaw puzzle or I like, figure out the math to create those swims so those athletes can have what they want and achieve what they want. But also I wanted to be there for athletes in every way that I didn't feel I had somebody for me. It was kind of like, you've got your mom and dad, or you've got these different pieces. And for me, my mom was my coach, but what was that element that I was missing? What did I need as a guidance or a supporting system so that I could, I could have that security blanket or safety net. And that's what I try to be with my athletes. I try to empower them. I try to, to help them be their best selves, but let them know they've got somebody in their corner. I think the fact that there, we have this brutal truth and honesty and this way of going about things with the athletes, uh, I think they feel really confident and empowered when they get to these high pressure situations. Um, so that's, that's the role that I play now. And I really love that role. It's not that I don't want to have an athlete 
at the Olympic Games with the gold medal in a world record time with the national anthem play. I want those things. I think why I want them is what's changed. Mm -hmm. I want them because it's what they want. And I want to know that I did everything in my power to help them achieve that goal. And I think that's what drives me to be a better coach is that it's not for me, it's for them. And I want to play a role in helping them achieve their goal with their swimming. And I think that's a distinction that I think we lose sight of sometimes as coaches. That's how I view it. So yeah, that's kind of my long-winded answer, guys. Sorry, I, you'll have a more long-winded answer, I guess, if you've been doing this for, well, what do I always say? I've been coaching as long as you guys have been alive, right? 25 years, yeah. Yeah, because I was put on pool deck the first time coaching kids. I think it was the 94-95 season. It was the first time that I got on pool deck. So. Too bad I'm 26. There you go. <laughs> so, so Vinny was crawling at that time, so we've got that. So yeah, so good, awesome. Well, guys, that I guess that that answers our, our first question or a couple of questions. Um, if there's more questions that anybody has, share them with us, right? If you want us to answer some questions, no matter what it is, we'll we'll, we'll love to keep doing these videos, answering questions, or if there's topics you want to hear us talk about or, or or go over and give some opinions on. By all means, share with us. Yeah, just send us an email, send us your questions or or topics, and or put comments below the video or anything like that. But good, thanks, guys. Thanks for doing this. Nice. Um, we'll do this again sometime soon.